Hi and welcome to the DE Physical Education Flip Learning videos. Within this video we're going to be looking at agonists, antagonists and the type of muscle contractions. So the main muscles you need to know are the following. These may come up in a fair variety of questions. They might come up in a table like this, just saying explain where each muscle is. But most likely they will come up as part of a question where you'll have to use your knowledge of the muscle to support further answering a question. So we have the deltoid, the tricep brachii, the latissimus dorsi, the gluteus medius, the gluteus maximus, the abductor magnus, the hamstring group, so the bicep femoris, the semitendinosus, the semitender brunosus, the gastrocnemius, and then moving across, we've got the soleus, so on the front of the body, the tibialis anterior, your abductor longus, your pectoralis minor, your pectoralis major, your deltoid, your tricep brachii, your bicep brachii, your iliopsoas, your quadricep group, so the rectus femoris, the vastus latrius, the vastus medius, and the vastus intermedius, but you can't quite see this one because it's slightly behind the muscle, and our gastrocnemius. So take a moment, write these down, try and remember a different way to remember all the different muscles, but you basically have to know these muscles to support your answers, either through a table or through further investigation. When we break these down a little bit further, these are the muscles you need to know within the different sections of the body. So the main muscles you need to know for the shoulder are the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. So your pec and the pectoralis minor is behind the pec itself. As you can see here, it's attached to the ribs. On the other side, you need to know the trapezius and the deltoid. So the trapezius and the deltoid. When we then start to break down the elbow, we need to know the tricep brachii, the front and the back, obviously you can see here, because obviously the tricep can be seen from the front and the back. We've got our bicep brachii, then when we're looking at the wrist, we've got our wrist extenders and our wrist flexors. There are other muscles within here, but at the moment you only need to worry about wrist extenders and wrist flexors. Our main muscles you need to know in the vertebrae column. So we've got our rectus abdominis, we've got our transverse abdominals, our inter internal obliques and our external obliques. So hopefully you can see these here. So rectus abdominis, the transverse abdominus sits slightly behind the rectus abdominus. We've then got our internal obliques and our external obliques. Again, the internal are slightly inside, like internal, and our external obliques are the ones you see on the outside here. And again, the main muscles you have in your hip. So we've got our gluteus medius, our gluteus maximus, our abductor magnus, our abductor longus, and our iliopsoas. Main muscles you're going to find in your knee and your upper leg. So we've got our gluteus maximus, our bicep femoris, our semitendinosus, our semibrenonosus. And these all make up the hamstring group. We've got our gastrocnemius. And then our quadricep group, so on the front side, we've got our rectus femoris, our vastus latris, and our vastus medius. Again, as you can see here in the diagram. We'll also talk about the vastus intermedius, but this you actually can't see because it's slightly behind the rectus femoris. So in the example, you can't quite see it. And again, in most uh, diagrams you'll see, you can't see it because it is behind this muscle. If we're breaking down the muscles in the ankle, we've got our soleus, our tibialis anterior, and our gastrocnemius, creating that plantar and dorsiflexion. If we're looking at agonists and antagonists, a joint cannot move by itself. It needs muscles to move the bone into position. When a muscle contracts, one end is anchored in place and the other end pulls the bone, causing movement. If we use the bicep as an example, the anchor point is on the scapula, so the shoulder, and the other end of the muscle attaches to the radius, or the forearm. The bicep is responsible for flexion of the elbow when the muscle contracts, the radius moves upwards towards the shoulder. 
This is something that you can do within your exam. And it's quite easy to see as you contract the bicep muscle and then obviously moves it up towards the shoulder. Again, if we're breaking down that agonist and that antagonist using our elbow as our example, the joint cannot move by itself. It needs the muscles to move it in position. When the muscle contracts, it is responsible for moving that occurs and it is said to be acting as the agonist. There can be more than one agonist acting at a joint, although it does depend on the type of movement that is performed. And hopefully you can see here as the bicep contracts, the arm is going up, tricep relaxes, and then the reverse, the bicep relaxes, the tricep contracts. An agonist muscle is one that works in opposition to the agonist. So when the bicep is contracting, the tricep is lengthening and acting as the antagonist. When one muscle is acting as the agonist and the other is acting as the antagonist, the muscles are said to be working as a pair to produce the required movement or an antagonistic pair. This arrangement is commonly referred to as an antagonistic muscle action. If we look at the flexion of the knee, the hamstrings are the agonist muscles and the quadriceps are the antagonist muscle. Key terms you should know before moving on in this video. Agonist, the muscle that is responsible for the movement that is occurring. Antagonist, the muscle that works in opposition to the agonist to help produce a coordinated movement. The main agonist and antagonist for each joint action. Joint action is the elbow and flexion. This is the bicep and the tricep. Then we've got our elbow extension. So these flip over, so tricep and bicep. Our ankle plantar flexion, so gastrocnemius and tibialis anterior. Our ankle dorsiflexion, so tibialis anterior and gastrocnemius, so again they just flip over. Our knee flexion, hamstring and quadriceps, knee eccentrin, again they flip over. Hip flexion is our iliopsoas or our hip flexors and our gluteals. And the main agonist and antagonist for each joint continued. We've got our hip actions, so if we're looking at our abductors, and then our antagonist is our gluteus medius and minus. If we're then going to abduct, so again, these flip over. Our hip and horizontal abduction, our abductors and our gluteals again. Our hip horizontal abduction, again, these flip over. For shoulder flexion, our anterior deltoid and our latissimus dorsi. For our shoulder extension or hyperextension, again, these flip over. For our horizontal abduction at the shoulder, we've got our latissimus dorsi and our pectorals. And again, when this goes to adduction, our pectorals become our agonist and our latissimus dorsi is our antagonist. For shoulder adduction, we've got our posterior deltoids and our middle deltoids as our antagonist. And again, for abduction, these flip over. So types of muscle contraction. When a muscle works, it contracts. A muscle can contract in different ways depending on the muscle action that is required. An isotonic contraction is when the muscle contractions to create movement. There are two types of isotonic contraction. When the muscle shortens as the fibers contract, a concentric contraction is taking place. When the fibers contract as the muscle lengthens, an eccentric contraction is taking place. An isometric contraction takes place when the muscle is contracting, but there is no muscle occurring. Key terms you should know. Concentric contraction, when a muscle shortens under tension. Eccentric contraction, when a muscle lengthens under tension or performs negative work and acts as a break. Isometric contraction, when a muscle is under tension but there is no visible movement. Isotonic contractions. A muscle causes movement in an isotonic contraction and there are two types. Concentric contraction, this is when the muscle shortens under tension, for example, the upward phase of a bicep curl. The bicep performs a concentric contraction. The eccentric contraction, this is when the muscle lengthens under tension. When a muscle contracts eccentrically, it, is, it acts as a break to help control the movement of the body, part during a negative work, e.g. landing from a box jump. Isometric contraction. This is when a muscle can contract without actually lengthening or shortening, and the result is that no movement occurs. 
An isometric contraction occurs when the muscle is acting as a fixator or acting against a resistance. A good example of this is the crucifix position in gymnastics. Practice question. Figure 22 shows a weightlifter performing a squat. Using the picture, identifying the joint axis, the main agonist, and the type of muscle contraction occurring at the hip and ankle joints as the weightlifter performs the downward phase. So within this question, you need to look at the following thing, three things. You need to identify the joint action, so what joint is happening at our hip and our ankle. What is the main agonist and antagonist? Again, at the joint, the hip and the ankle. So here and here. And then finally, what type of muscle contraction is occurring during the downward phase? So as he comes downwards, which one is occurring of our three different types?